Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to talk about something that everyone should be aware of if they're in the market for a used or a vintage acoustic guitar, and that is how to avoid buying a guitar that's going to need a neck reset right off the bat. Just to put this in perspective for those of you who may not know, an acoustic guitar in need of a neck reset is sort of like the equivalent of a car that is in need of a head gasket replacement. So it's not impossible, um, it is in fact entirely possible and there are lots of shops that can do it for you, but it is a lot of work and it's a lot of investment and it's going to be expensive. And so it may be a little bit more than you want to get into on a vintage guitar, depends on what it is. We'll get to talking about that later in this video. So let's briefly talk about what a neck reset is. So basically a neck reset uh, is where I would go in and pull this 15th fret drill a couple of holes through the fretboard and into the dovetail neck joint that lives under here and joins this neck to the body. Um, I would then inject dry steam into those holes and separate the neck from the body using that steam. And once separated I would be removing some material from the heel of this neck and changing the angle at which it joins the body and then re-gluing it. There's some fret work that's going to be involved afterwards and there's some setup work that's going to be involved afterwards generally. And so if you thought that sounded like a lot of work and like it sounded pretty invasive, um, you are correct. And something that I would also add is that you are working with dry steam under pressure. And so that's going to be inherently hazardous. And so I wouldn't suggest getting into a neck reset job unless you were really confident in your skills and or you had a guitar that you didn't mind destroying in the process because it is very easy to do this job um, badly and uh, if done badly it is very easy to make a guitar um, basically put a guitar past the point where it would be easy to repair and that is an unfortunate place that you don't want to be in so let's go ahead and talk about the situation that would necessitate a neck reset so this is a um, this is an illustration that I made kind of exaggerated so that you could see what I, what it is I'm talking about this guitar up here, you have the body and the neck, is kind of the ideal that you'd want to be looking at if you were buying an acoustic guitar, where you've got a nice healthy angle here. We call this angle neck pitch, and so you can see that this neck is not parallel with the top of the guitar. Um, it in fact kind of breaks away at an angle and drops. And that enables you to have a nice high bridge but low string action. And what that means is that you're going to have a guitar that's comfortable to play, but still has enough pressure being applied to the saddle so that you're able to get some really nice tone and nice volume out of that guitar. So this is basically kind of what you want to be looking at is something that's got a nice healthy angle, low action, you know, some height over here. This unfortunately is what you usually see when, you know, getting into, you know, buying vintage guitars, uh, vintage acoustic guitars, which is that um, they've had a lot of time to sit around and a lot of time to move. And so Sometimes you'll get a guitar that has a neck that is parallel with the top um, where there's no angle present. Um, that's not good. Sometimes you can work with that, um, but what you really don't want to see is a guitar that's got this concave thing going on where you feel like you could put some arrows in there and fire it like an English longbow. Um, it would work really great as a bow, but very poorly as a guitar. So um, basically what's going on here is that over time, this guitar has moved and it's moved in the direction that tension was pulling it and so it's moved with the strings and so the, the guitar's neck has just kind of gone and just kicked up just a little bit and torqued um, to the point where you don't have any neck pitch and you in fact kind of have the antithesis of neck pitch where you have this concave thing going on and that happens because over time um, I'd say that the main contributor to this is that over time the back of the guitar will actually stretch a little bit and allow that neck to kind of come forward. And there are some other things that kind of come into play that can cause this neck to move a little bit. And all wood guitars, unfortunately, are going to be subject to this at some point in their lifetime. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that when looking at old guitars. It's not like different brands uh, or different builds are better than others. It's just that it's the nature of the beast. This is just kind of what happens. Doing neck resets is um, par for the course of acoustic guitar maintenance eventually in, every, in the lifetime of every single acoustic guitar unless you've got something that's made of carbon fiber or something that's made of, you know, fiberglass or something weird like that. If it's made of wood, um, this is probably what you're going to be 
looking at after a number of decades. And so the problem with this is that in order to get these strings lowered, you need to change the angle of this guy down here to look like this guy up here. And uh, that's what that neck reset is all about. That's why you need to change the angle so that you can drop those strings just a little bit closer. So let's go ahead and look at an actual guitar and uh, I can show you what it is that I look for um, when looking at an acoustic instrument. Um, turning this over, um, this is the 12th fret here and you can see just with reference to my fingers how high this action is. Um, and if I drop a ruler there you can see that this is you know sitting somewhere around like maybe 630 seconds which is really really high that's just soaring above there and the problem with this action is just that it's very very high it's going to it's it's going to fight you a lot when you're playing and you're this is going to chew up your fingers and something that people won't often talk about but is also true is that the higher the action the more tension you're adding in here and the more tension that you're adding in here the more that's going to throw off the intonation of the instrument so even if you did have the uh, muscles to play this thing for any period of time, it's going to sound awful. So let's go ahead and look at the three points at which I can uh, usually attack um, string height uh, during a setup. One of those is the nut, the next would be the neck, and the thing after that would be the bridge. So let's go ahead and take a look at this nut. So I'm going to depress here on the third fret and tap here and check this height. And I can see that I'm not really getting a whole lot of movement. In fact, some of these aren't moving at all, which means that the nut slots might actually be worn down farther than the frets, which, you know, if the action were lower on this thing, would probably cause buzzing in first position. So we're not going to be getting anything out of this nut by adjusting those slots or taking them down at all. And in fact, um, we probably would want to raise that up when doing the setup. So let's go ahead and take a look at the neck. Um, I'm going to depress here at the 12th fret and then tap up here somewhere around the 7th. And uh, what I'm seeing there is about the width of a business card of movement, maybe a little more. And um, about that width of a business card is typically what you actually want to see. That's desirable. That's neck relief. And um, yeah, so it doesn't look like there's a whole lot of space to move here and straighten this neck out and get some height out that way. So if you if you do this and you see a whole lot of space here, it's possible that if the truss rod on that guitar functions that you could probably get some height out that way and as soon as you got it back to, you know, normal uh, a normal healthy neck relief that, you know, you may may end up doing a real number on that string height problem. Uh, something to watch out for though is on old vintage guitars like this one, the truss rod actually is not in good condition, it's in fact shot, and so even if um, we could get the, um, the string height out that we wanted that way, I'm not sure that it would actually be possible um, with this guitar's truss rod in the condition that it's in. So the next thing, and if you remember nothing else from this video, remember this one rule of thumb, and that is that if you see high action but you see a low saddle and a low bridge, it is um, probable that you are looking at a neck reset. Because in order to lower those strings, I need to remove about twice that height uh, from the saddle. And um, as you can see, there's just not that much space to work with here uh, that wouldn't drop those strings right on the bridge. And um, sometimes you're able to plane the bridge down and get a little bit more out of it that way, but I just don't see that happening with a bridge this thin. So, unfortunately, this guitar is going to be looking at a neck reset if we want this action to come down towards any sort of uh, playable height, and that is really unfortunate, especially given that this guitar is not an old Martin or Gibson. This is a Decca, and so this really isn't worth, um, I think, doing a neck reset on unless you're really interested in really interested in doing it as like kind of a hobby thing so it's not going to be worth the money so anyway um, definitely look out for that this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle Washington thank you for watching